here. Uh, before we continue, I just wanted to make a little announcement here today. Unfortunately, this morning we lost one of our utility family members, Mark Holseeder. Worked for the city for 20 years, retired just this past December. And I just, uh, on behalf of the city and myself, I've known Mark a very long time. Just want to wish my, send my condolences and uh, prayers out to his family. He will certainly be missed. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Moving on. Meeting minutes, February 2nd. Audience away, so I'm going to skip over that. Old business, um, garbage recycling rate, Tim? Uh, we discussed the uh, garbage recycling rate, and at this time, uh, made the recommendation to take no action. Okay. And ordinance 350 7 parking restrictions. That's in the yeah, basically, this is going to authorized public works director to approve on street parking over the winter with objections coming to council if you have objections. Yeah, and I just made the wording change. That's why you asked me to bring right. it back with the correct wording. So that's right. why it's back. It's got if the denied, correct. applicant may appeal to the city yep. council. Yep, correct. All right. So this can go forward then. And this came out of public, uh, public, public works. works. Yes. All right. Any questions, comments? Send it on to approval. Yeah, I'll move to approve the changes to the parking ordinance. That's a second. Motion by Wired, second by Pets to approve ordinance 350 7, parking restrictions. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Meeting summary since the last council meeting, water, water, and light. Tim? The large portion of our last meeting dealt with uh, going through the, uh, <coughs> through the wastewater treatment plant. We also discussed the pilot, which is coming up later on during the council meeting, and uh, we went through the annual report. Also made a motion to start the summer sewer rates uh, a month ago, so we'll start in May. And what the summer sewer rates are is they do it an average of the pre previous months and uh -huh. uh, charge your sewer rates based on that. So it used to be June, right? Yes. Yeah. Just add one more because we had a lot of people filling pools. Early in the year? Yep. Sure. Nice. All right. All right. And everything else will be below. Uh, Parks Commission, Mr. Gabe is here. Gabe yep, I'm going to refer it to Gabe today. Well, there you go. Uh, what we did um, is we talked about our citizen input um, at the Parks Committee level. Um, so we changed some policies there when it comes to citizen input. I mean, do you guys want me to go into detail about it? If you want to make it very brief, you can. Um, we approved the $75,000 grant for TRP play structure to be put into Fireman's Park. We <coughs> did do a voice vote, and I guess it's a question that we probably should have put in front of finance. It's no spending on us. Um, it's a fully funded grant or playground. We did do a voice vote uh, because it was monetary, but we didn't know if we needed to send it to finance and city council to approve. Was the grant accepted? I haven't seen anything, no. It's, it, it's basically, <laughs> uh, Greater Watertown Community Health Foundation is basically giving us $75,000 to put in the play structure. And so basically it's a take in, take out <coughs> for us. Because then we'll be charged by um, Gerber Leisure who's putting in the, in the structures. So there's no cost to the city? There's no cost to the city. Okay. 
but we still haven't seen the grant. Right. right. It's more of a procedural thing. Than yeah. So that's what that, that was the question. Like, yeah. you need to see that in front of you guys. Yes. Because yes. we have to accept yes. it. So then, for your next meeting, you'll have sure. that in front of you. Yep. So just council and not anyone else. It just Doesn't have to go to finance. Council. Just you just council. We should have gone to finance <laughs> before it went to council. Okay. But is there a? <coughs> Do you have a time constraint on that? No, there it won't be put in until August. Do so we have to sign something? Do they send us some paperwork? That yeah, we have to accept yeah, it it's in that? an email in my office right yeah. now. So, so <laughs> what is a resolution that'll come through? Yeah. Because yeah. grants, we have to still have a conversation about how to write up that. Yeah, so that, that was the question. Right. right. Like just because, like right. usually, like when we get a DNR grant or something like that, it would go in front of you guys. We'd right. have a resolution. We'd go forward. All grants need All to come to us. So, so I didn't know if, yeah. since they were just paying it in full, if we need, still needed to do sure. that. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'll have that. I'll have that in front of you then at your next meeting. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, July one, <coughs> we decided to put out a community survey. That'll happen after our next parks meeting because the parks commission wants to go over the questions before we send it out to people. We will be going forward with our regular July 4th schedule of fireworks and all that stuff for this year. Okay. Um, you have the core plan. We'll go over that later on uh, today. Um, and the dog park will be getting closed. It's um, <coughs> construction at the sewer plant. And the Parks Commission voted at the previous meeting to move the dog park. And it will be placed in Euchre Park. It will be larger. Um, and then we're going to phase it out. Um, and the dog park is going to be funded through <coughs> our next donation campaign. And Throw the path in there, too. That'd be great. Yeah, would that would just add another $100,000 sure. to yeah. it, so that, that's great. Right. Um, Gabe, what question, Gabe, a question on that? It's going to be open this year, though, for the season, the dog park? Up until March, and then we're going to be going ahead so basically it's so as we soon to, as we can to get. We need to refund the people that purchased. No, nope, because we're going to be trying to do this as soon as we possibly Oh, it's all going to be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be phased okay. out, so we're getting the right. fencing first. Like, as soon as we can get an So you'll be moving it, so it'll be. Okay, I yeah. get it. Under, okay, thank you. Phased out at the current location. Correct. To Move to the other. Correct. correct. <coughs> the new dark, the new dog park will be constructed in phases. Correct. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Starting with a so yeah, trash yeah. containers. Yeah. Okay. Right now, our, our estimates are at you know, like 110,000, where our first phase would be, you know, 50,000, and that would be the fencing um, and like dog waste stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, containers, and then we would work on phase two after. So this way, there's not a big discrepancy <clears throat> in people not having a dog park. We're mm -hmm. trying to. Do it as quickly as we possibly can, but doing it right, the right way, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. We don't want to have the same thing happen as last time, mm -hmm. where they put it in a dog park, and it was before I got here, mm -hmm. um, and the fences is falling apart. Um, yeah, they, they did it as cheap as they could because they wanted a dog park, and this is where we're at. Okay. I'm sure we'll, we'll see it, but I, I got questions like parking. Which is so parking would be is the, <coughs> so the the plan is to tie it in with 203 uh, East yeah. Madison Street with a parking lot mm -hmm. that actually is supposed to have a little Kiosk. park there yep. with a kiosk and stuff like that and then that trail would lead down to the dog park and we also have an easement yet <coughs> on the street um, yep. with the old um, you, you warming center. center. need plans and drawings and stuff to post. That would be great. All right. Thank you. Finance, Tim? Uh, most of what we discussed in finance is coming up later <coughs> on the uh, council meeting. Okay. We did discuss the garbage rate increase, which I mentioned earlier, and decided to take no action. The cable board's going to be got approval to move to a new location. Yep, that's and uh, we're notified of a rate increase by for some city cemetery services, by Meitner Land Services. <coughs> uh, the parking lot bid was tabled. So everything else, the rest of it's in the meeting. <coughs> Thank you. Consent agenda items from January in your packet. Any additions, corrections, questions? All that good stuff.
Don't fight over it, people. <laughs> Not to make a motion. There to we go. Consented. Lean on him. Griffin. There we go. Motion by Pat, second by Griffin to approve the January reports. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Good job. Way to play along. <laughs> Uh, recommendations of boards, committees, and commissions. So we have finance and insurance and personnel, Tim. Thomas will make a motion to approve the January 2023 financial statements, general disbursements in the amount of $1,480,493.25, payroll in the amount of $78,862.12. The uh, clerk and treasurer's report was tabled. Pets a second. Motion by Thomas, second by Pets to approve the finance, insurance, and personnel items. Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin, cool, yes. Charles, cool, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Wired, yes. Pets, yes. Motion carried. Uh, Waterloo Utilities got a whole bunch of stuff down here. So we'll start off with resolution 2023 <coughs> of which we have three of them. Ooh, we're pointing right over there. You guys get to get yep. to talk. Just state your name so everybody knows who you are. Uh, ben Heidemann with Town and Country Engineering. Uh, so you guys have a resolution in front of you, but I believe you also have our recommendation letter. Is that correct in your practice? I don't have a recommendation. Do I have a recommendation? I didn't get a recommendation. I don't have a recommendation. Nope. No. It's <laughs> um, right. gonna, is it? Is it? <coughs> it's an analysis of the bids. Basically, okay. uh, where things are at is uh, bids were taken last week Tuesday. I can pass around. I have one copy of it. I thought it was in your package. I apologize. You can always um, email it so yep. that we have it on or, file. Um, bids were received last week Tuesday. Um, Richard wants it. Oh. Oh, there we go. Thank bids you. were received last week Tuesday. We did get three bids uh, for the wastewater projects. Uh, the scope of the project, just as a reminder, is everything at the treatment plant plus improvements to the Lum Avenue booster station. Uh, Pre-bid estimate was $17.5 million, though we did expect it to come in quite a bit higher than that based on uh, keeping track of where bidding was this uh, in the last two months. The water and wastewater industry has been inundated with projects, and so everything uh, that's been bid this year has been between 15 and 100% over. And there have been multiple projects that have been 100% over budget. Um, and this came in at what percent over budget then? Other communities. No, I understand that, but didn't you say 15, ours? No, yours is 25% uh, 20, over budget. Okay. Um, so, our, again, base bid uh, estimate was $16.5 million. Uh, the low bid was Ports and Construction out of Dubuque, Iowa, uh, who had a base bid of $21,671,337.75. There were uh, three additive or alternative <coughs> bid items. Um, long story short, that, and I can answer as many questions as you want, but the Utility Commission is recommending awarding the entire project. We do have supplemental funding set aside, which is very different than, honestly, a lot of the communities out there. Um, the difference in cost for this <coughs> is anticipated to be roughly a 5 to $7 <coughs> per month rate impact compared to previous estimates. We were at $77 per month. Now it's going to be in the $80 to $85 per month for the average user. Um, we're going to continue working with the utility on that, and we're working with the contractor to identify um, value engineering opportunities, but uh, we are recommending award of the construction project. Um, and I told the Utility Commission this, and I'll tell you <coughs> what we've been seeing in the industry, 25% uh, over is about right on budget for where 2023 bidding has gone. Um, there's been about $300, $250 million worth of work bid in the last eight weeks, um, which is about the same as a total year in a normal year for water and wastewater in Wisconsin. And what did the lead time get pushed out to? Because I know we kept talking. Total project completion is scheduled for 800 days, so it's going to be just over two years uh, for substantial completion. Not starting until? Once we issue a notice to proceed. So realistically, there will be a notice to proceed issued somewhere between March 15 and the end of March. So it would be 800 days from that date. No perceived 
engineering snafus? Nope. Everyone, uh, everyone's, <coughs> we asked all, of, actually all of the contractors, including not the low bid, what things they saw. There's some materials we'll be looking at, potentially having some alternatives proposed, but there were no concerns for them. They said actually it was a pretty stable plan set for what they've been seeing. There's been a lot of people rushing stuff to get out. Do we have a contingency cushion in there mm -hmm. too? Okay. Yep. So yeah, so you'll be still. going into construction with a 5% <coughs> contingency as well. Okay. Did you say five? Five. Yep. Yeah. And that'll all be part of your funding budget. So what will result in this is and we're still working on it with rural development is your your base funding from rural development will stay. Um, we may get additional funds from them or we may get additional fund funds from the Clean Water Fund. That's that application I think we talked about with you guys even uh, last fall that we submitted as a supplemental funding source. Um, so you guys have flexibility to kind of pick which one gives you the best grant opportunities. Right now you're looking at about, for the overrun, about a million and a half of grant money will be included in that. And if rural development does better, then we'll take rural development. You what do have did we three find out about those grants? What's that? <coughs> those grants? We don't have that information yet, right? You have, so the way the Clean Water Fund works is we did that application. Okay. They issued it as a, um, a funding list, but until you actually establish your final project budget, they won't give you what the final percentage is. Okay. So we're expecting about 30%, right? Is what we're working it out to. It's going to be about 30% from the Clean Water Fund. Um, I'm not holding my breath that rural development is going to come back with more. They've had about, of the projects they funded this year, they're at about $50 million overrun that they're trying to find money for. And you guys and one other one we're working on were the only ones to apply for supplemental funding. So everyone else is <coughs> begging rural development to get more money. Question on the resolution the package. Yep, three of them. So there's so they're different wording, obviously. Yeah, so there's three resolutions there. Um, I'm, I would recommend using the one with no contingencies. I should have said that as well. So we had been working with rural development, and at the time you guys' packet was put together, I didn't have all of the information. They are comfortable with you guys uh, moving forward without a funding contingency. Funding contingency would be you need to get confirmation from them that you can award and sign contracts. We've got enough ducks in a row that you don't need to worry about that. The other one was real, or DNR has not had not formally approved your plans yet. Um, they actually missed their deadline, so statutorily you have <coughs> approved plans from the DNR, so you can award the no contingency. Okay. So, so whichever whichever one of those says it's the last, it's the last one. Is accepting a bid in the amount of twenty two so on and so forth. Yep, right? but the pick the one that doesn't say contingency though. Right. The last one in your package. Would be the last one. Okay. The, package. the one I didn't print because I thought it was. <coughs> I didn't. <coughs> oh, the same. I'm like, oh my god, you got the same one three times. Okay. Charles School motion to approve resolution 2023-07. Coming to a second. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Motion. Resolution 2023-07 by Charlie Cool, second by Cummings. Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin Cooley, yes. Charles Cooley, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Huerta, yes. Yes, yes. Motion carried. All right. Uh, Ordinance 2023-01, uh, Waterloo Utility Check Signers Ordinance Chain. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to take that one? Uh, I can take it. Uh, the Utility Commission reviewed City Ordinance 40-2D <laughs> in reference to signatories on the uh, checks. And it was made, uh, determination was made that the utility president and the secretary of the commission were not uh, signatures that were required. We were at, we were doing three signatures. We were only required to do two. two. So it was decided to drop it down to two, and the signatures would be, uh, and this is pursuant to state law, sure. which shall be signed by the clerk, deputy treasurer, and the utility superintendent. Do you have anything? 
Or you want to add to that, Barry? No, because we're just going to follow state statutes. Sure. Right now. Weren't there more things we were doing in this ordinance, like fixing the fluoride and a couple other comments? Not in, not this, in this ordinance. ordinance. Not in this it's, ordinance. Not, it's not in no. this particular one? Okay. For some reason, I thought they were all. So, right. Thomas will make a motion to approve ordinance 2023 01. Cummings will second. Motion by Thomas, second by Cummings to approve ordinance 2023 01, updating to state statute the signature requirements. Roll call. Cummings, yes. I'll simply yes. <coughs> Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Where's yes? That's yes. Motion carried. Um, water Utilities Finance Resolution 2023-06, revising the pilot formula. And that too, fixing state statutes. <coughs> well, it's, it's fixing uh, the Public Service Commission's uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. What a pilot is, is payment in lieu of taxes. The utility pays the pilot, believe it or not, on water main that is under the ground to pay city taxes to have water property mm -hmm. in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> what the previous resolution had the pilot set at was a minimum of $127,464. <coughs> when the pilot was calculated this year, the pilot was 117,000 something like that, yeah. In some odd sense. According to the PSC, <coughs> the utility cannot pay <coughs> the city an amount greater than the calculated number. The 117, which was calculated this year, is under the 127,000. So we need to modify our resolution to meet PSC, <coughs> PSC is the Public Service Commission, because we can't, by law, pay any more than the 117. Right. Uh, this resolution calls for an amount not to exceed the 127,464. In committee, I recommended that number be changed to 130,000, just to give us an even number to work with. So I'm going to make a motion to approve resolution 2023-06, revising the formula for the payment of <coughs> the pilot from the utility to the municipal general fund uh, in an amount not to exceed $130,000. Motion by Thomas, second by Austin. Cool. Um, questions? So this gets paid when? I believe this, Joyce set it up that it's four times a year long. Quarterly or something like I think, that? I don't even think it's quarterly. I think she just makes four payments for filing. I think it's, I think it's four. I think it's four. Yeah. I think we yeah. make, I think we can pay it all throughout the year. Sure. And I think um, originally Mo had it monthly and I think Joy changed that to four right. times a year, but I'm not sure what the month. I are. was more interested in like budget time, <coughs> where how would we know this? Does this will we know this? At we the don't end know of? until you give us your your tax. What is okay. that? Okay. Tax so equivalent. The mill rate. The mill rate. The mill rate. The mill rate. And then Which there's all formula that goes out with that. Yeah. So all right. That is in December, I believe. Well, this will just be a conversation we have at to know that it's never going to be more than 130, but it can vary anywhere in this number or less. It typically will not meeting. go down. Yeah. It, it did this time, huh? <coughs> yes, because you guys did your reevaluation, ah. which brought that down. Okay. But until you do another reevaluation, it'll continue to go up as we put more assets, as we get more assets that we get taxed on, it'll just continue to keep going up. Okay. But you can cut that any time. I mean, you don't, you don't have to keep it. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have any questions? Roll call. Cummings, yes. Austin, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Where? yes. That's yes. Motion carried. Resolution 2023-08, recommendation from the park board to approve the comp plan, which is a nice, pretty little document. 
Uh, so what you have in front of you is the uh, core package that has to be updated every five years to go out for certain grants, uh, specifically the DNR. Uh, communities need to have a core package. Uh, the last time it was updated, of course, was in 2017. I believe Council Member Griffin and Thomas and Mayor Quimby were the only ones here at the time. And actually, Austin Cool, Council Member Cool, was actually a part of the first one we put together because he was actually our intern for that summer. Um, basic updates are made to it, um, like who your planning process people are, and that would be including uh, the new members of City Council or utilities or anything like that. Um, the major changes in this new update are updating from a future park plan to parks that have been now added. Like, perfect example is Fox Park is now part of the core plan instead of being a future site park. Uh, the same with the parking lot down below, Riverside Park is now part of this instead of being a future park plan. So it basically just needs approval. It's been updated. We went through it as the Parks Commission pretty much page by page. Um, and checked out any spelling or anything like that that we had. So it just needs to go forward with council approval. Jeannie's printing the resolution because it didn't make it in the packet. Oh. <laughs> so unless there's anything else you would like to talk about in here, we have a minute. Because I'm not sure what the resolution says before we approve it. Do you have the dog park in here too then, by any chance? Uh, maybe a sketch. The dog park? is listed under, um, <clears throat> if you turn to the matrix page that has all the pretty little logos, okay. it is listed there under Euchre Park. And as you can see, it is in yellow right now. Matrix. What do you mean by see it's in yellow? Look at that. The matrix page. Yellow icon represents uh, something that's in the future works. Oh, all righty. Hmm. Very well crafted document. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Gabe. Austin and I tried our best. <laughs> <Good>. <coughs> But this document five, does last for the next five, five years. years. Yeah. So then, in, at the end of 2028, we will update it again um, and then have to go out for a resolution again in 2029. So, under Fox Park, though, you have it listed as 20 car parking lot with two parking stalls, river walk, volleyball, kayak. So, this is still to be planned. Yes. Okay. So, but Fox it, Park is an amenity now. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's listed there. Okay. Even though we don't have this done, that's to be determined yet. Yeah. So if you go to that the matrix page, yeah. <laughs> there's a page that's with this all of this yep. stuff. Yep. Yep. In the next one? page, and okay. it, you'll see right there the amenities that are there and the amenities that are in red. That means it hasn't happened yet. Yep. Black is good. Red is still in the plan. All right. Cool. All right. We now have the resolution just like that. Perfect. Sure. I don't know why you get it off my chair. Does anybody have any questions <laughs> on it? <laughs> What's that? Are there any questions on it? to approve the resolution 2023-08. Austin Cool and second. Motion by Cummins, second by Austin Cool to approve the outdoor comp plan for the park. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, Waterloo Cable. <coughs> I'll take that. The license agreement. The cable board. <coughs> has requested to relocate to the 
uh, Solarium on West Madison Street. There is a license agreement, not a lease agreement, but a license agreement. It's part of your uh, packet. And as part of that agreement, the Solarium has been extremely generous, I would say, in renting it out in the amount, it's four ninety five, right? Yep. Per month. And they have a five year agreement. And as such, I think you only have to go on the other side of the council chamber and see how cramped they are where they currently are. Just to give them space where they can actually do some work. So uh, out of finance, it was unanimously approved to recommend to the council uh, approval, to give approval to the cable board to move to that new location effective on March 1st. And I would make that motion. Cummings was second. Motion by Thomas, second by Cummings to uh, approve and authorize the city to sign on the license agreement. So they will still leave just a few pieces left in here, but then the closet will now turn into a closet and we get to move stuff around again. We're excited. That's, that's correct. We need to yep. leave a couple of these cameras here because they're, they're dedicated. The microphones are wired in and dedicated. Mm -hmm. And then there is a uh, piece that's like so by so that is only used for council yep. meetings and live streaming them. So, uh, takes up a tiny amount of space. Yep, Everybody not a problem at all. Will be gone, mm -hmm. and that space will be used for other purposes, whatever you decide. Um, I did uh, <coughs> ask that a nice letter that Jeremy Friedman from ETAC, which is the company name that owns the solarium. Um, I, I hope it's in your packet. They've said they support the arts, and part of their uh, generous reduction in the rent is because they believe in supporting the arts. Oh, I did see that. And they have to support the cable station. I'm going to see if I can get that email over to the courier so that it gets a little bit of press, a little positive press for the station, a little positive press for the solarium. And I can read that if that's okay right now. Um, it's from the Solarium. We are thrilled to be hosting Waterloo Cable TV at the Solarium. We feel our space has a potential for Waterloo TV to showcase what Waterloo is all about. We hope to foster a connection between the Solarium and the Waterloo community through various events, such as cooking classes, incorporating local cheeses and quality products in our state-of-the-art kitchen space, and community events for adults, families, and local businesses. We look forward to tuning into Waterloo TV to see the exciting content they will create. Thank you, Laura. All right. Did we, um, okay, I made the motion. Yeah, we yeah. Made, the, made the motion, but it is also money, so roll call. We, oh, Cummings, yeah, we yes. second, do we? Cummings, yeah, second. Cummings, yeah. Yeah. Th Thomas, mm -hmm. the Cummings, yep. Cole, yes. Charles Cole, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Weird, yes. Hats, yes. Motion carried. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, review consideration of resolution 20. 23-05, approving the project plan and establishing the boundaries of the tax district 5. We are finally on. Thank you very much for your patience. They would have been here in person, but the snow kept them. So fortunately, we have Zoom, so we're all good. So if anybody's going to talk over there, we'll move cameras around. If you and Everett can't hear something, nod, point, whatever you need to, and I'll make sure we can hear everybody. So Bree, do you want to take it? Yeah. Sure. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. This is Brian Ray. I'm going to be signed up. I'm sure Elliot has your question. And you have before you this evening the uh, tax district incremental five. Um, it's a project plan, and, and there's a resolution to adopt the project plan. Um, this project plan uh, has been before the city, before the planning commission. We held a public hearing at the last planning commission. Um, discuss the project plan uh, and it was approved by the planning commission. Um, <coughs> the resolution should be in your packet. Um, it's also in the back of the state project plan and appendix. 
district we had to stay under a newly planned residential threshold um so we're kind of at that i believe it's um just over 30 percent and we have to stay under that 35 percent rule with a mixed use tid so uh that's the reason for that as as well so if what do you see in the project plan there's the maps that kind of lay out the percentages of land use um, going forward so we had to stay under that that threshold for newly planned residential Happen. Correct. But it would be included in the district. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Or that, that land too, you know, in the future land use plan as part of the comp plan um, is, you know, has been noted to be single family residential as well in the future. So, you know, it's kind of what we what we went off of as well um, as part of the, the TID project plan. And ideally, or realistically, I think it's a better word, based off of the lands that are all included. These are 
most likely to happen perhaps within the 15 years. And that's not to say we couldn't extend a TIF and do more later, but right now um, this is way more inclusive than TIF 4 ever was. And we have a lot more opportunity. And Everett did meet with the landowners, so people are aware of what's going on. So that was a good thing. Any other questions? Barry, if you have one, you were confused. Yeah, I just need to hear that again with the utilities, what they added. The utility was added on page 19 for one point something. One point five? Yeah. One point five. Um, $1 yeah. Right. It's item 11. It says yep. electric infrastructure improvements extending 25 kilowatt. I think that's what it is, KB. Electric to the north side of Waterloo. Yes. Is that good? Yep. Okay, yeah. And Brian Henning asked about the school, um, and he's also a board member, so that too was included. Providing we will have plenty of traffic, we might need more signage. All right, anything else? What's your pleasure, people? <coughs> She was quite surprised to see that it was much higher than she was expecting, not understanding that they were all changed to zero lot lines. Can you give a rundown then of conversation? Sure. Um, so I reached out to um, Alan at Associated Appraisal. Uh, we, we had been going back and forth before this with emails. Um, Alan had made sure that everything, he has everything date stamped and uh, he followed procedure uh, 100%. Um, he had done everything right, so when the, we got this letter, I reached out to Alan again and to um, Jenny and Tim, and Alan went to his director. They reviewed everything together again, and the director stated that Alan had, had done everything he was by law. He followed every regulation that he needed to follow. Um, there was a mix-up because Petrie um, changed some to zero lot lines, and, and Fran was aware of it, but we're not sure how that was communicated between the two of them. The information was sent out, but before the deed was recorded to, to, change, to make the changes, um, Petrie got, the, got it and the recording came later because it, there's a delay, they don't get everything recorded right away. So it was sent out to Petrie like it should have been. It didn't show any address change or ownership change. So Petrie did not share that with her. Um, he did not forward it on to her. But as state statute, it was sent out properly. So we reached out to um, our attorney, Bill, and he reviewed everything. Um, he agreed with the findings. We had Alan on the phone with the attorney. We all talked about it. Um, they all came to the same conclusion, and they felt that uh, we were not, um, we should deny this claim, that it, it's not a legitimate claim. Um, if she would like to come before the uh, review board and follow that process, she could. But at this time, everything has been done um, as needed, and so it was Alan's, Alan's and the attorney's advice that we should just deny the claim. I have a denial letter that I would send certified to her to let her know. That bill wrote. Yeah, that, and yeah, it was written by the attorney, so. Okay. So 
So that's the event. Do you have any questions right. on that, or Jenny or I or Tim should be able to? So you have you have to be informed when this happens. I can't just say deny it and be done with it. So it has to come to council. She did send a letter. She did want everybody to review it. And like Jeannie says, we did talk to all the proper people. The city is not at fault at all. We can't tell how the circumstances went down, but that is strictly between two private buyers. We can't really say anything more to her other than sending her this letter. And then it's, it's basically in her hands. And that's really all we can say. So the primary reason for the <clears throat> increase was the fact that these were zero lot lines. So zero lot line homes are higher value than a duplex. Right. Yeah. That's just. Well, that's not necessarily as a rental. That doesn't matter. But, it's, but they're assessed <coughs> in a single family <coughs> home. So that would be what they're taxed on. Which we had approved all of that all along during the process. And that was their, their request and et cetera. So. So basically, we're just letting you know we had a notice from her. We did our due diligence, and we're informing you of the denial. And it's on you to say you approve the denial or not. So her beef is really with Petrie. Correct. If uh, there was no disclosure, that could be a problem. And again, we can't give her advice, information, right. plans, because we have to stay completely out of it. That's true. Bill's words, yep, stay out of it. Thomas make a motion to deny the claim. Wired to go second. Motion by Thomas, second by Wired to deny the claim. I am going to go roll call on this. Cummings, yes. Kelsey, yes. Charles, yes. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Wired, yes. Pets, yes. Motion carried. We will send off the letter. All right, rate increase for the city cemetery. That, I believe, was in. Finance, this was one of them kind of things that I didn't even know we had. So I think you're going to bring this back next time as an actual resolution because we have to look at the fee schedule and uh, um, we'll just kind of look at some past ones. And, you know, Chad said he's had four open since 2010 or something like that. So this really isn't going to be that big of a deal, but we have to go through the proper channel. So it's just for information and yeah. So, yeah. So no motion, nothing, no action taken at this time. It'll come later. All right. Rolling into D. Uh, six months of new compensation. Do you need to go into closed session? Or you want to leave it open? Uh, I don't think we need to go into closed session. Okay. Don't so leave two. Only if you want to have more compensation. Okay, uh, I guess we'll skip closed session. Yes, you don't really need for it. Okay. Uh, Jeannie missed her six month review, and we are complete, we've completed that now. And uh, as such, she also missed her, her increase. Based on our review and your past year of work, the city clerk's office has seen a complete renovation of people and processes and the work that Jean has done has impressed me when I go in there and I probably see her second to the mayor probably more than any other member of the council here. And, uh, whether she likes it or not. Yeah, whether she likes it or not. And she has always taken the time to research whatever questions I've gotten. And I think she has done an excellent job in revamping the office. And based on her, her actions over this past year, I am very happy to make a recommendation that we increase her <coughs> from 51000 annually to $55,000 annually this year, and I will make that motion. Second. We'll make the second? For him? I believe it's based on your actual anniversary hire date, which was March 1st. 1st. Yep. Just wanted to clarify yeah. March 1st. We got our anniversary date, correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, any questions? 
and well, you've done a very good job. This is really nice. We get the minutes at the next meeting. Isn't that awesome? Not two months later. <laughs> Excellent. And we have a full staff. Lana can't leave, so we're all good. <laughs> yeah, Sarah can't leave. Everybody's saying we're going to try one year with the same people. It's our goal. Just one. Just one. Just one. Maybe step. Maybe step. Start it one. Roll call. How many does he ask? Austin Julius. Austin Julius. Griffin, yes. Thomas, yes. Where? Yes. Pat's yes. Motion carried. All right. Jeb was making faces at me. What do you need? I was just wondering if you gave him that handout with the duck cleaning and stuff. The duck cleaning, I got it right here okay. because finance went too yeah. long, so I'm going to give that to them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anything else? Oh, I have a couple things. Okay, go ahead. Um, you all received a W-4. Uh, we mm -hmm. had, um, our system was trying to abort checks. Uh, we needed to update our tables, and so that's why you all got a new W-4. So if you can get that filled out, you get uh, your checks, the first payroll in March. So please get that back to us before then. It doesn't have to be by uh, Monday because you won't be included in that payroll yet. So uh, the other thing is uh, voting. We did our testing yesterday. Everything passed. We had oodles of people in. No, zero. Um, uh, no, Tim looked in the door while I was doing it, and Dennis walked by one time too. So uh, everything worked out fine. That'll be on Tuesday. Uh, we have. Um, Everybody's set for that day, and so please vote, and yeah, everything's set. So, here we go. Right. Cool motion right there. That's a second. Like you wanted to say mm -hmm. Gabe? Um, Three. Gabe, did you have something you want to say? Uh, yeah, we have our, our tickets are available for sale for our first park fundraiser of the year, April 1st, Bree Morgan. Uh, tickets are on Eventbrite. Uh, it's posted on our social media and has gone out in our advertising campaign. So that'll be April 1st. Not a joke. Not a Not joke. Not a joke. Good one. I like it. All right. Motion by Austin Cool. No, I'm sorry. Charlie Cool. Second by Pat Cummings. Cummings. Who did it? I will. <laughs> I wrote you started it. <laughs> yes, yes. I wrote it down. Four, okay. five, five, five. Don't do that to me. <laughs> All in favor? All right. All right. Motion carried. Have a good night, everybody. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.